Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So many years ago, uh, when I was still trying to enlighten the fools of mainstream mathematics academia, and I was pointing out all their flaws and errors, which the morons still don't get. Um, I came up with a theorem that does away with having to prove any epsilon delta arguments. Okay, it's a general theorem and it works for every single function you can possibly imagine. Did you get that? Stop the video and think about that. I just told you that I invented a method that even with your bullshit formulation of calculus, your mainstream bullshit formulation of calculus, you only need to do this once and you never have to again, use epsilon delta proofs. Well, what does it say? So the statement of the theorem is this. It says that if epsilon is greater than this distance and delta is greater than this distance, then L is the limit provided the area of the circle here reduces to zero as X approaches C. And I will explain that in a moment. If you want the complete proof of that, you will come to this link, which I will place in the details section and you'll see the entire proof of it. It's quite involved. And by the way, as you'll find out later, all this crap is totally unnecessary because it doesn't rigorize calculus. It never has rigorized calculus and it never will. And especially in view of the new calculus and my historic geometric theorem. Everything you learn with epsilon delta arguments is a complete and total and utter waste of time. Okay, so how does this work? So what it, what it says is that <clears throat> if you have, let's say C is equal to one and you wanna find the limit of this curve here, by the way, which is the square root of X, it means that the closer you move to the point of the limit, the smaller the area gets, as I defined it, until there is no area there, and that's where the limit is. See, when delta equals to zero and E is equal to zero, the limit is one. And as you move away, the area increases, okay? But it still implies the same thing about the limit, okay? There's no difference. And if you had to move this point, say somewhere over there, like that, and once again, if you move away, the area becomes bigger, uh, but as you come closer, like that, then you reach the exact limit. Now, you don't only have to believe me that this works for f of x, it works for any function. I'm about to show you. Look, let's type in another one. Uh, is equal to, let's say, sine of x. Okay, so there you go. So now we've got this limit here, like that. Boom, let's put it on there, that's a half. And as we keep coming closer, like that, and that is the limit in radians, okay, over there, where C is equal to a half. And if we move this over here to 1.5 approximately, then if we move away, it gets bigger, and if we get closer, well, that's almost one, okay? That's because it's not exactly, it's not exactly pi over two. So, but the theorem works regardless. Wherever you place this point, it doesn't matter. You will still get the correct answer. So moving away makes the area bigger, moving close, as soon as the area is zero, you have the correct value, okay? So let's try, no <clears throat> let's try another one. <clears throat> let's try f of x equals to x squared. Okay, so once again, let's put it over here on c equals one. And as we move closer there, boom. Okay, the limit is one because one squared is one. And we can move it down here, like that, 
and then bring this down here like that and the same result okay so this method works for any particular function doesn't matter which one you have uh, let's do f of x equals to l and x okay once again if you move away the area becomes bigger okay so let's put this on there and let's move this guy towards that point okay that means if x is one then the log of one is zero as expected so i'm not going to waste time on this you can download the applet to which i'll place a link and play around with it and see how it works okay and by the way i've changed some things in here so i'll actually update this applet before i put it in anyway so that was the theorem that removes the need for you to do any stupid things. And of course, these calculations and everything are riddled with errors, right? Um, and I invented also another method. If you really want to go the route of finding the exact uh, min delta and min epsilon, and this method here in this file, it's quite long, explains to you a systematic method with a proof at the end of how you can find the exact epsilon and delta. But why would you want to do it when you have a new calculus that's rigorous and this bullshit here isn't, isn't at all the reason calculus works, by the way? It has no effect on the fundamental theorem. And I'm not talking about the one that you know as f of uh, b minus f of a is equal to the integral from a to b. I'm talking about the mean value theorem. So the Britannica entry for mean value theorem is wrong. And you can read this article to find out why it's wrong. And also mainstream mathematics academics like math lecturers and teachers are incorrigible ignoramuses. They don't know that the mean value theorem is a fundamental theorem of calculus, and they don't know what the remarkable statement of the mean value theorem is. In other words, it's not about a tangent line that is parallel to some secant. That's the unremarkable statement. It's about the fact that there is a level magnitude or arithmetic mean, which makes things like quadrature and cubature and hyper volumes possible okay then finally um, a lot of the problems in mainstream academia are caused by the fact that they don't understand the concept of number okay number is the most important concept in mathematics if you do not understand number you do not understand mathematics that's why no mainstream professor understands mathematics not a single one by the way unless of course they've learned from me what is a number because they have no clue what it means to be a number. They have no definition. They're scatterbrained. They think that anything can be a number, anything that comes out of their sewer brains. That's not true, okay? There is a valid systematic derivation of the number concept as discovered by my brilliant ancestors, the ancient Greeks. So, if you're not already a subscriber, become one. Click like, tell your friends about this channel. You have a lot of studying to do, by the way, because you really should prove all these things to yourselves. I mean, you should never take my word for it or anybody's word for it. So if you have one question or two, you can ask, but I'm I really, because of limited eyesight and problems with my eyes. I cannot get into long discussions, so don't write long comments, please, because I'm not going to read them. And, uh, you know, follow me on academia.edu, which is this particular website here. I'll place a link to that as well. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.